Lepidopterophobia Posted by Bloody Spaghetti I bought this house not too long ago It seemed ideal when I found it A two bedroom apartment at the edge of town Away from the prying eyes of strangers I don't mind driving an extra few minutes to work Or to the grocery store That's what cars are for right there's also a basement i never bothered checking until now and quite lots of it at least during the daytime the price for the place was fairly reasonable some might say it was too low i'd argue that's bullshit in our day and age everything is expensive I just found something that wasn't, maybe I got lucky, or maybe not, I'm not really sure, it's only quiet during the daytime, it gets quite noisy after sunset, the night specifically, whenever I close my eyes to be exact, from my first day here, the moment I attempt to fall asleep, I can hear the chirping of grasshoppers tearing through the silence of the night preventing me from sinking into the sandman's domains that said every time I do open my eyes in annoyance the noise seems to fade away back into non-existence it's as if my lack of attention is triggering the ruckus Eventually, of course, I pass out from sheer exhaustion and the noise stops penetrating my mind. I haven't gotten any kind of decent sleep since I moved here. Absolutely none. I'm constantly tired and weak. And more so, I keep finding all these bug bites all over my skin. The itching doesn't make my life any easier. The odd thing about it is that there are no mosquitoes to speak of in the area, nor any grasshoppers. While I might be away from the urban centre, it's still a concrete jungle all around my place. No grass fields in sight. I've been looking for the strange source of the irritating noise but couldn't find anything. Even pest control didn't yield any results. The nightly terror occurs every night, again and again, slowly digging its way into my brain, eating away at my sanity. I'm pretty sure I've started seeing shadows move around the house hell at one point I'm sure I've seen a man stroll around the house nearly gave me a heart attack I just remember a figure walking past my field of vision sending chills down my skin as I watched it move half out of focus I blinked and it was gone I didn't even attempt to sleep that night. Other times, I felt something breathe on the back of my neck, making me shiver before I turned around and found out nothing was actually there. I've also had the pleasure of experiencing a few tactile hallucinations. A hand dragging itself against the top of my head, making me shudder or nails tracing themselves against my leg making me kick so hard I lose all balance and fall off my chair recently though the noises seem to to bleed into my waking hours as well I'm not really sure if it's just my sleep deprived daydreaming or actually something rooted in reality it comes and it goes worse each time behind me in front of me all around me taking over everything through noise induced 
paralyzing anxiety during a terrible episode. I was about to lose it completely. My head was spinning, the walls were dancing back and forth and the sensation of ants walking all over my skin made me itch myself. So hard, I actually broke the skin in a few places. The noises just kept getting louder and louder. Everything bled into each other and the sensory input overwhelmed me to the point I couldn't even notice. I had wandered off into the basement. The basement door stood open ajar before me as the noise and all other sensations were fading into the background. All but the dizziness, nausea. My eyes scanned the previously unexplored room, barely steady enough to register anything. Thoughts were still incoherent and messy. They were fluidly racing at 5,000 miles an hour in my head. My eyes landed on the worst possible thing. A large shape on the floor, one not unlike me. The sickening sensation of angina interlaced with nausea, induced through the strong taste of iron in my mouth, I overrode all other senses as I looked on with sheer terror at the corpse in front of me. A few seconds later the stench of decay hit my nose. The smell of spoiled eggs and fish confirmed my suspicions. The form in front of me was indeed a corpse, albeit preserved. It was bloated and pale, its lower jaw stained with blood. Instinct took over as I slowly tiptoed my way towards the dead intruder and poked it with a shovel. My hand grabbed faster than my mind could alert my eyes to its presence. The moment the steel spade touched the porcelain skin of the cadaver, it exploded. A terrible noise, that sickening chirping, exploded out of nowhere, deafening me. A legion of bright blue-winged butterflies swarmed the entire space around me. I heard myself scream. My limbs moved on their own as my mind melted under the crushing weight of the noise and the visual display. I felt a couple of painful pricks on my arms before I fled from my basement. The loud thundering noise of the thick metal door slamming shut served as a great motivator to run for my life as I fled my house towards the safety of my car. I do not know how much time I spent panicking in my car, but it was a while. The sun had set and it was getting dark before I could finally calm down enough to think straight, as straight as a madman could think, that is. I had an eureka moment. I was going to exorcise the basement with a baptism of fire, nothing thinking this through. Obviously, I got out of the car and grabbed the gas canister I had in the trunk, attempting to march back inside the house. I found out my panic had rendered my legs too sore to run or even march. Instead, my body forced me to limp awkwardly back into the house, screaming and shouting at the grotesque horrors inside. I opened the basement door with such force that it slammed into the wall, producing yet another thundering crack. The basement was empty. No corpse, no flying insects, no nothing. Pure, ghastly silence, piercing, almost punishing, impenetrable silence. I stood there for a few moments, pondering the entire ordeal. Had I gone mad? I've gone mad indeed. There was nothing there. I was all alone. Completely alone. Stranded with a canister of gasoline in my hands. 
sinking into that one memory from my childhood. I had fallen off my bike and tore open my left knee, laying on the concrete, crying as the shock waves of pain travelled through my entire body. A small butterfly landed on the exact spot where my fall had broken the skin and through which searing fires of the abyss erupted the sensation of its pointy legs digging themselves into my exposed subdermal tissue stung like swords being logged into my flesh and I screamed in pure animalistic agony waking up from my nightmare memory I was standing in the basement, surrounded by the unnatural silence. Feeling drained and sore, I dropped the gas canister on the floor and left the basement. What happened next is a blur, but I remember waking up, fully dressed in my bed. No new bite marks, no noises, completely calm and almost fully rested. That was the last time I actually slept over two hours straight. Even though the chirping is gone and it's completely quiet at night, eerily so, the noise never stopped. Every night since that night, I end up self-torturing with apocalyptic thoughts about the chirping returning, about the flies, the corpses, about human-faced cockroaches eating the human intestines of their still living victims that howl in a sadomasochistic pleasure with my voice I keep myself awake with my own loud thoughts screaming inside my head it's gotten to a point that I see a striking resemblance between me and the corpse in my mirror Whenever I look in the mirror, I am pale, gaunt, a shadow of myself, trapped in a purgatory, somewhere between alive and dead. It's getting dark again, and I think I can hear the buzzing in the back of my head again. Late Night Beach posted by Dependent Ad 87493 This happened around two weeks ago Me and my buddy Jason had an idea of going to the beach at 12am It was legal after all So I got everything in the car and Jason got the towels Alright you ready to go? I said, yeah, still can't believe swimming in the beach at 12am has become legal. I mean, it's summer and Joe Biden wants us to feel the ocean vibe. I guess you're right. Time passed and we arrived at the beach. There was only four people there, a lesbian couple and some bros. We got out of the car I took my shirt off as Jason did the same. Hey Jason, wanna say hi to the lesbian couple? Uh, sure. So we walked over to the lesbian couple. It was a dark skinned woman and an alien girl. This was usual since I had an alien friend named Kimira. Hey girls, what's up? I said to the lesbian couple. Oh, we're doing good. Just chilling, that's all, said the dark-skinned woman. That's good, and hope I don't sound weird by asking this, but... What's your guys' names? Oh, my name is Sloane, and this is my girlfriend, Joey, said the dark-skinned woman. It was normal for a girl to have a boy's name, so I didn't feel confused by the name. 
Those are good names, to be honest. Oh, thank you, said Joey. Any time. Terence, come on. The water isn't going to swim itself, you know. I'll be over there, I yelled to Jason. A few hours had passed and I saw a black figure in the ocean. What the fuck is that? I said to myself. Hey, Jason. Yeah. Look at that. He looked and saw the black figure. Does Sloane and Joey see it? Jason said before I can answer. Sloane yelled, What the fuck is that? She sounded weirded out. We don't know what that thing is. I yelled to Sloane. Hey, called someone in a deep male voice. I look up and saw the guy with his bro. Let's get out of here, now, demanded the guy. Why? Before he can respond, there was screaming. I looked and saw a blonde getting attacked by a troll-like entity with black hair, grey body, black hands, a blue pelvis and black legs. Everyone screamed, including me, and we all rushed out of there, hoping to never return again. Sloane crashed at our place for five days until her brother came to pick her up, but in the morning after the incident, there was a news report about a dead body in the water. They couldn't figure out what it is, but I know what it is. Joe Biden has made swimming in 12 a.m. legal and he didn't know about this. It still shakes me to this day to know the fact that creature is still out there. And that's it for tonight, my little hellhounds. Thanks for listening. If you have any scary stories you want narrated on the channel, then submit them to reddit r slash home of scares and follow me on Twitter at home of scares. If you like these scary stories, then why not subscribe and click the like button and click the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload. Now, good night, my little hellhounds.